Water at 15.6 degrees centigrade flows through 200 millimeters of cast iron pipe at a rate of 0.1 cubic meters per second. Determine F and HF for 100 meters of pipe and the delta pressure to move the water vertically 100 meters. This is a little bit more of a complete problem than just finding the Moody chart stuff. So we're taking a look at this. Uh, we need to find the change of water vertically in a pipe. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to apply the energy equation. So to apply the energy equation, we need to make some assumptions. So let's draw quickly. Here's my free body diagram. I'll draw my control volume around it. There's my CV. And I've got water coming at point 0.1 going up to point 0.2. Now we need to make some assumptions. First one, fix CV. We have a 6 CZ because that's the way I drew it. Same thing with one dimensional inlets and outlets. We have that too. Now I have these assumptions in there. Those two are not really required to solve the energy equation. Yeah, if we're doing linear momentum and stuff, we do use those quite a bit. Is it bad to make these assumptions? No. Does it really affect what we're going to do with the energy equation? No. For the most part, most of our problems really should be a fixed CV, one-dimensional inlets and outlets, even if they're not affecting things. Uh, the ones that do affect energy equations, steady flow. There's nothing that says it's not steady. Uh, incompressible flow because we are dealing with water so it's going to be constant and then the last one I'll squeeze in over here is constant temperature flow because our temperature needs to be constant to have this work out so now let's draw the uh, let's write down the energy equation so I got pressure over gamma plus V squared over 2g plus Z all of that at point 0.1 where it's coming in has to equal pressure over gamma plus V squared over 2g plus Z all at point 0.2 where it's coming out, plus the head of the turbine, minus the head of the pump, plus HF. So first thing that we want to do with this equation is we want to knock out the low-hanging fruit for the energy equation. Very first one's easy, no pump, no turbine. Those are going to fall out. Uh, we definitely have a height difference, uh, Z1, Z2. It's going to be 100 meters between them. I mean, we can set Z1 to 0 and just have Z2 as our height. It's a constant diameter pipe. It's 200 millimeters cast iron pipe. So that means that V1 and V2 are going to be the same. So for the energy equation, that will end up falling out. So what is that going to leave us with? That's going to leave us with pressure over gamma plus... Well, we made Z0, so pressure over gamma at 1 is going to equal to pressure 2 over gamma plus Z2 plus H sub F. And so then if I go and... I do want to calculate out the pressure difference. So if I move that pressure over, what I'm going to get is delta P is going to be equal to gamma times Z2. That takes care of our height plus H sub F. So that's what our pressure difference is going to be. So this is the equation that we need to solve. I know Z2. I can look up gamma. What I have to calculate is out is HF, and we're going to do that just like we've done with some of the other example problems. To calculate out HF, I need to solve the Weisbach equation. To solve the Weisbach equation, I'm going to need the Darcy friction factor. How do we calculate out that? I need to know the Reynolds number based on diameter, so VD over nu. So let's look up our properties of water. Properties of water at 15.6 degrees centigrade, we'll just put it up here, is going to give us a kinematic viscosity of 1.12 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared per second. So we need that piece of information. Now we also need to kick, calculate out velocity because we have diameter. Look at that velocity. That's not a velocity. That is a volumetric flow rate. So we need to make sure that we convert that over to our velocity. So what is velocity? Velocity is Q divided by A. Our Q, 0.1 cubic meters per second. Now I need to divide that. And this one's interesting because we usually deal with the GPM. 
cubic meters per second is already in base unit, so we're good to go. Divide that by pi over 4, and then I have a 200 millimeter pipe, which is 0.2 meters squared. And when I calculate that out, I will get a velocity of 3.18 meters per second. I can go and I can plug that into my Reynolds number over here. 3.18 meters per second times 0.2 meters divided by 1.12 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared per second. All the units cancel out. Unitless parameter, which is what I'm looking for. Calculate out Reynolds number based on diameter is 5.7 e to the 5. I look at that. That is a very turbulent flow. So we're going to go to our Moody chart because we can use the Moody chart to calculate this out. So Reynolds number based on diameter of 5.7 e to the 5. I need my epsilon, so I go to my book. What is the epsilon of cast iron? It's 0 0.26 millimeter. Special note, this is not the English system where it has it in feet. Epsilon's actually in millimeters, so we have to pay attention to that. We need a dimensionless number. So 0 0.26 millimeters divided by our 200 millimeter pipe will give us an epsilon over D of 0013. So as we take a look at this, let's find 5.7 e to the 5, which is going to be somewhere right in here, right between the 5 and the 6. I got 0013, which is going to give me, let's see, 2013, somewhere right in there, right on top of that line. So if I look at it, I should be coming in just about right there. So I have an F value of basically 0 0.021. So now I go and I solve the Darcy-Weisbach equation. So H of F is F L over D V squared over 2G. So it's 0 0.21. And then we need to multiply that by the length of our pipe. The length of our pipe is 100 meters. Our pipe diameter is 200 millimeters. At this point, we're going to convert that to meters so the units work out correctly. So V squared is 3.18 meters per second squared divided by twice gravity, two times. Now it's metric, 9.81 meters per second squared. Meters cancel, meter squared cancel. Sorry, second squared canceled. We're going to be left with units of meter, which is what I expect. So HF for this is we're going to lose 5.4 meters of friction through the system. I'm going to box these two because they were specifically asked for in the problem. Not done yet. Now we go and we solve the energy equation. So going back to our energy equation, what do we say? Well, the change in pressure is going to be equal to the gamma of the fluid Z2 plus HF. Gamma of the fluid, we go and look that up. Water is going to be about 9,800 newtons per cubic meter. Our Z2 is 100 meters. We're going to add to that the 5.4 meters of frictional head loss that we had. Because this pressure difference has to overcome both the elevation head and the friction head. And so once I do that, I can multiply that all out. Delta P is going to be approximately 1,000. 33 kilopascals. So just to think about that, moving up water 100 meters in the air, 1,033 kPa is, is approximately 10 atmospheres. So 10 times atmospheric pressure. That's, that's a decent amount of pressure. And then this is very similar to how we're going to be solving major piping systems, is using the energy equation and then calculating out all of the information that we need from the Moody chart.